I'm Tian Sun, Associate Professor of Geospatial Science from IMIT University just down there. And uh, I feel very happy to come in to see me every time because it's much warmer. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Maybe it's colder. So I was here, I was my PhD student, Cindy Patas, here. I was here last September to attend a conference called the three uh, SD, S, S3, Smart Data, Smart Cities, and the 3D Geo Info Conference, which organized by CC and the Jack. So almost one and a half years after that, my group called the GRCell from IMIT, we developed some special digital twin. I'm so happy to see from Brendan's slides, we use the similar terminology, the spatial digital twin. So I first, I really want to thank you, CC and Jack, to organize this opportunity for us to present our small spatial digital twin. So uh, my topic is advancing sustainable urban planning in spatial digital twin paradigm. I also happy to say Brandon mentioned that the term paradigm. And uh, we, as a researcher, also research students, we focus on conceptualize the real world problem and conceptualize the technical workflow. So you will see a lot of, lot of diagrams to show the framework. And I will present some case studies. Right, so some case studies. Um, the first one is developed by my master student, Ryan Turner, a responsive digital trend framework for real-time city-scale flooding modeling and the disaster event monitoring. And uh, my team received a little funding from IMIT enabling in impact platform, developed a spatial metaverse to build an immersive virtual experience with georeferenced digital twin and the game engine. So if you visited the IMIT, how many of you visited IMIT campus in Melbourne? <laughs> I know you have. So IMIT campus kind of located in the center of Melbourne, we occupy about 6% of the building for the whole uh, Melbourne CBD. So a lot of other historic contem contemporary buildings. We also have a lot of, lot of students from overseas. We have overseas campus. So the purpose of the, the digital twin is kind of create a virtual campus and the uses buzzword metaverse to promote the spatially enabled digital twin in game engine. That's the, the purpose of that project. And that we have some ongoing spatial digital, digital twin um, research, including our uh, PhD student, Sinjitas here. And then we try to develop planning based, spatial planning based digital twin. For example, the first one is to support the decision making for rooftop solar energy planning. And uh, currently we receive a government funding to try to develop urban climate digital twin, digital urban climate twin for a new precinct in Sunshine, which is the hottest area in Victoria. And now they want to make more development to build a new station, but they want to take advantage of the, this opportunity, not make the hot worse, but kind of mitigate the situation. So we are involved to do some sim simulation to test some scenario for the future city in that area. And the senior class here, she is looking at developing modeling to model people standing in different resident from different levels of high rising building how much brain they can see from different levels. So that will involve build a semantic city information model. And uh, we have this students working on actually further from the first response of digital twin for planning, try to use VR to visualize, to create an immersive 
application to see if the flooding happening with real time connected, how much interaction they can do to do early warning and uh, uh, pick um, evacuation. So I I listed a few uh, samples of special data train we, we developed. Actually, it's, uh, what I can say is fit for research purpose re replica, if I say it's not real kind of product we can uh, rule out for you know um a lot of people to use it is fit for research purpose replica to summarize them how all all these special data trends support advanced efficiency urban planning we kind of conceptualize into four mm -hmm. categories here so first is the data train pretty much used for descriptive analysis for example, currently, as all related different maturity level of the digital twin. So, for example, the IMRT metaverse is pretty much the 3D modeling using the 3D photo mesh tiles and uh, linked to microclimate sensors. Yeah. And uh, we um, kind of configure that in Unity. Game engine is VR, so still is at the level of descriptive analysis to showing to navigate to visualize the the reality the near re realistic uh, environment, and uh, a little bit higher the level than that we call the predictive modeling for digital twin. So most of the digital twins we in, involve some spatial analysis, spatial modeling, for example, the flooding digital twin is real time, the real time is for the water level and the rainfall uh, data from API. So use turf jets to model the flood happening and uh, how, uh, how that kind of affected the environment and the buildings being uh, affected. And that also um, predict the mod modeling in data train also in other sample of the data train I presented, including um, Sinita's work on how to we how to kind of calculate major people standing in different levels of building the training we can see. So a little bit higher level is called the scenario planning and the simulation. Currently, we try to use the microclimate modeling software called NVMAT to link the with some 3D model, use city engine, use city GML, 3D, 3D city deep database management system to enable kind of bigger area um, temperature air temperature modeling. So run multiple what if scenario and simulation for urban climate twin for new percent. And uh, for planning purpose, we we also make some effort to take a, advantage of this immersive game, gamification kind of application to to uh, facilitate the collaboration with stakeholders to engage communities particip participation and the responses and the, to get feedback from you know any any um planning and not decision making or policy related um process if that makes sense so thanks. right okay so yeah, as I said, we always conceptualize the real world problem, then conceptualize the technical process, put it into so-called concept, conceptual and methodological framework. So this is the framework we kind of um, put together the method, the steps, mm -hmm. data input, the tools we use, and the functionalities together to show the application of IMT was 1.0. We are trying to get funding to do IMRT was 2.0 failed. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, we still um, try to kind of promote this approach, which we can take advantage of a reality touching to build a 3D uh, photo mesh model, then you integrate with 
uh, IoT um, API, which is in this case, we use the microclimate sensors in, built in around the campus and uh, configure them in Unity engine. We see a lot of opportunity for the future of geospatial industry. Hopefully you agree with me. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to too much details for every step. So pretty much we have this 3D, the reality capturing use the photogrammetry methodology, which we didn't do it. We purchased the data from aerometrics. I have to acknowledge that. Um, then we we use this 3D campus photo mesh model in a very high resolution to link the, with the API connection and uh, then configure the in Unity game engine. And then we enable, we create this avatar, couple of cute avatar to navigate, um, like Superman can navigate in the campus and uh, pretty much the whole Melbourne City CBD, because we occupy 6% six, 6 of the, the, the uh, building around the CBD center. And uh, we create configure this virtual reality uh, view. Um, so any users, they can use equipment to navigate in the campus. A lot of areas, I never been there, but I access the user. So that's the, again, the framework for uh, digital spatial digital twin development. This one is for the flood digital twin application. So the, on the high level um, conceptual framework, we pretty much, you know, uh, link the physical world with the virtual space through, in this case, we, we mainly use the IoT sensor data and uh, we enable the, the the response from the virtual virtual um digital twin back to the reality. So information sent back to the reality. So that's a very high level framework. So the efficient integration of real-time data analytics into a responsive digital twin is the core of this application. And uh, so this kind of responsive digital twin technology is well positioned for the application of flood modeling. And uh, the technical framework here, um, again, so we started from create this 3D CTDB somewhere, 3D CTDB database, use FME, use QGIS plugin, and the uh, I have to add a, a small thing here. I'm teaching a course in MIT called the Cloud-Based Open Source GI Solution. I'm promoting a uh, special data twin so students learn how to create a um, geo database, use PostGIS, how to use middleware called geo sensor, geo server to, to, to communicate from the back end database to the front end web portal. And uh, so, um, so we got to the map and water river level and the rainfall data as so a real time, near real time, a few minutes delay possibly. And uh, then um, use the, the web tag JavaScript bundle to link to the database. So we have two database, databases. I should have another. So two databases are created, one spatial based database and three and one is 3D city DB. And uh, we link that to water API. And uh, this element um, was built into system ion and uh, use it using turf GS to enable the flood modeling. And uh, eventually we use GitHub cloud services and the collaborative platform to publish the application. So that is the product currently under review by one journal. Um, so to highlight that, so this kind of application, so far I introduced a pretty much successful students project and uh, pretty much we follow the gym line principle of digital twin, and that is another term for Australia, New Zealand, and the digital twin principles. 
Um, so we summarize the few uh, points here. It's a tailored responsive digital twin framework that enable real-time flood modeling through IoT sensor connection, integrated spatial database, and coupled with physical and the digital city model to enhance flood modeling accuracy. And uh, during the designing, also in the paper, we reviewed how this application align with Gemini principles, especially the standards we used and how we enhance the interoperability and uh, maintain information back, a uh, feedback loop, which is one of the uh, Gemini principle. And um, it executed real-time IoT sensor connections, event trigger and the 3D visualization for precise flood modeling. And uh, to summarize as a driving application of digital twin technology in real-time flooding modeling, enhanced disaster response strategies. Okay. So, which one is this one? Uh, <laughs> so this uh, earlier student project, um, so is the title being high, being high, so I <laughs> don't remember the exact it's, title. <laughs> yeah, the title is Spatial Digital Twin Framework for Over Height Vehicle yeah. and Free Routing System. Rerouting system. So this one is also under review uh, by Wen Jeno. So we try to create this real-time response use velocity, ArcGIS velocity. And the, the 3D environment model built with the point cloud with um with AI classification, which provided by City of Melbourne. And uh, this student make an effort to create this 3D model and uh, enabled the, the real-time feedback sent to, for example, some drivers use this app, they can receive the information on road. If the vehicle is going to approach the, the tree, probably at the lower or the similar height, with this vehicle kind of sending out the early warning uh, alert. So yeah, so to capture an integrated LiDAR and the 3D data in a 3D road environment model, I have to say, see this 3D road database is less accurate than you guys. And uh, it's pretty much just like um, some, some ship files uh, from the government Wrote a network and uh, photo mesh data and uh, some lidar point cloud showing the trees. Um, so it's not um fully fully accuracy of the three D road environment. And uh, to model integrate and combine three D tree object into the three D road environment from the point lidar point cloud to determine the placement of active warning system alert in a 3D road environment model, and then develop this spatial digital twin prototype that connects the physical and the virtual world with IoT technology, which we use a velocity mm -hmm. and provides real-time analytics to alert drivers with mobile technology. Okay, so there's another project. How many minutes I have? Uh, five. Jack, five minutes. Okay, I have to make it quick. I, I need I need time to talk about the issues. <laughs> so, um, so this uh one of the we have on the program on the students project that kind of conceptualize this called eco again the title being higher but uh, anyway so it's an ecosystem for um so to model the potential ecosystem co benefit um that. Greening roof, roofing can provide a, a city scale by scenario testing via city digital twin framework. So kind of using some spatial analytics tools, for example, build the geographically weighted regressing model to test different scenario, then linked to kind of this idea of how the real world um, elements and how in in three D environment how the result rendering on the three D city look like so a simple spatial digital twin 
And then this one, we try to learn some project which CC you uh, develop the previously thermal comfort or urban workability. But it's a very um, a very superficial level. Um, this is a master pro master dissertation project. So we kind of try to integrate all the factors affecting all the thermal comfort, and uh, uh, which we we did doing shadow analysis. We use the non non set surface non surface temperature high resolution vegetation and terrain, for example, slope aspect, downstream network, field environment. Uh, we even you can use the nighttime light imagery, wind modeling, then kind of use spatial analysis to, to develop this com composite thermal comfort index and then link that to social demographic profile of the neighborhood then put it into this 3D environment to, to enable people to understand which area they have, which neighborhood pretty much has have lower thermal comfort and how that affects to the workability. Okay, so that's what we are trying to do is kind of following Singapore uh, digital twin, they call the Singapore cooling Singapore 2.0. So we got this project uh, working for Sunshine and um, um, kind of try to simulate future city base case, then the scenario one, two, three. So how um, heat can be, heat environment or temperature can be different result from different, uh, um, for example, city ge urban geometry, a different configuration of vegetation, Shadowing that related to the part the building, so they are convert converting some existing building to a new building. They want to know if you know all over ten levels high, how that will affect the temperature. Of course, materials are key factors, and also considering um kind of water sensitive design. For example, irrigated grass, and uh, considering other other. Uh, factors from transport and how that linked to energy efficiency, right? So that's not our work. We're trying to replicate this cooling thing up 2.0. Some following slides for that. I'm not going to details to that. So this Shinji has work currently. She is trying to build um from observers point. So there's a database, the kind of geo beam to, to locate any observers position, then create this line of sight and uh, use view shared analysis kind of concept to calculate how much greening can be viewed from different levels of building. Um, and then the result can be rendered into a 3D CT model and uh, some framework he she developed the so issues a <laughs> lot of lot of issues so myself not trained from 3d background so i learned a lot from uh, other uh, colleagues and uh, from you know the bigger research community um but i see this is a really great great opportunity to to look at how we can kind of use this opportunity for to support the urban planning. Um, so, of course, the first uh, first uh, challenge for us, our students, is like how to really use the CTGML library, the tools, um, how they can use the 3D CTDB to manage it, to store, manage it, that data. Okay. And the uh, Cloud computing, so AWS or GitHub or Google is all kind of new area for uh, for us to to explore and use to support the spatial digital twin development and the, how we can integrate the modeling and the the design for the front end interface or the challenge in the technical workflow. So solutions. So we try to follow some standard in terms of um using CDGML files to build 3D CDDB and the kind of um, 
to streamline the process for cloud trying to kindly use GitHub. And then um, again, for challenges of integrated modeling, we uh, take advantage, advantage of REST API, use your server as a middleware and uh, follow the standard data. Front end interface design, um, if we try to implement this kind of uh, VR based use gamification approach to create a more immersive, immersive um, front end user interface. But I think we want to learn more from you, hear more from you about the solution. That's all from me. And uh, I kind of um, acknowledge that work all work from my students is not from me. Um, so including Cindy uh, Tan here. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. And I can see you. <laughs> Uh, it's very exciting to see all this work done in parallel in the Victorian context as well. And um, I imagine you know, just, uh, soon we'll be able to get amazing metrics. I got a question from many audience online from Victoria. Uh, yes. <laughs> they are some. Uh, yeah. um, well, uh, um, so we have one question at the back. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Thank Hi. you very much. Very nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, so something maybe you have mentioned and I missed it, but uh, it, it, this looks like there are several digital twin projects going on. Yeah. Is there some kind of centralized federated system that everybody is starting from or everybody's developing from silo? Silo. Silo, yes. So yeah, so that's also the issue. So we need a bigger fund to do the more centralized. Yeah. Um it's actually a good good question. For as a researcher, we just do fit for research purpose, you think. So these are funded by research projects? Or they, like these are maybe some tasks? Yeah, only one is a funded project. Others are students year around research project and a, a few PhD research people which are funded that I have to say. Yeah. Okay, because it would, I mean a lot of these steps are kind of really similar. Yeah. similar. Yeah. So it would have been really powerful to have this kind of centralized this RMIT digital screen, for example, it was ready so that people could tap in and play around that would really yeah. be nice. We yeah. need a city support dream. on that. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, well, um,